Welcome back to Zero Tolerance for another episode of Learn to Burn with Practical Machinist. I want to try to explain some of the features when you're doing EDM, how we have to use high tolerance EDM. And what I mean by that is trying to get the numbers to come in correctly. Usually you're either leaving stock, you're blending into an existing cut, or you're trying to use or come up with a very fine uniform finish on your surface so that your plastic parts come out and they look perfect like there was only one process done. So this is actually an example that we can kind of show what I'm talking about. If you look at this, this is actually a, a over molded uh, part and it will have a rubberish type material. So this rubber, if you think about it, a suction cup will stick to glass and that glass surface is super fine. Um, so in order to get the suction cup not to, not to stick to the glass, you have to kind of give it a bead blaster or uh, EDM finish or even a sandblast finish, bead blast, something like that. So that's what we've got here. We've got a real uniform finish, but we've processed this block in many different ways. We cut it, we EDM'd it, and there was benching, and we made it all look smooth and uniform. This particular mold, we had to do the same kind of thing. We had to make an electrode and to get the sharp corner out. Um, this particular part is an over mold. So the finish doesn't have to be good, but down right here where the actual material touches, this has to actually stay an EDM finish. So this actually worked out really well. This blended perfect into that. And then we know that that's gonna end up being a, a good match on the part. Oh. All right, we have this very cool feature that we're trying to burn. Um, we did cut it very close, but there's actually a very sharp edge we're trying to maintain. So we made an electrode and this electrode's gonna go down and almost go finish, probably go right in within 10 thousandths. And hopefully if this works right, we'll be able to show you that very small edge that it actually burned away where the uh, burn or the cut uh, it's going to overlap the burn. All right, you can see where this, somewhat see where this thing touches almost everything. It, it literally burned this in about less than five minutes. This particular burn, uh, we had to catch this little lip. This is really going to be difficult to show in here, but it, but what I want to show is what we look for when we're burning and, and um, the witness of the electrode against the steel that's machine finish. You can see this small step in here, and I'll kind of show you in the CAD here in a minute. But this is a great demonstration of what what we're talking about when we're trying to blend into something that exists which is always a good idea and try to overlap um, areas to make the uh, the surface finish or the area you're, you're machining or burning make that all blend and look very uniform and minimize benching or polishing. Here's another section of this same burn or same part. We're going to be going into this corner and doing the same thing. It's going to blend in and sharpen up a section and that will uh, hopefully demonstrate what I mean by blending in so if it doesn't end up touching some of the larger surfaces that we had and we only have one electrode by the way if it doesn't touch some of those surfaces that means I may have to drop it down or, or um, re you know increase the, the burn depth by half thou or something like that so we'll do something really tiny to make sure that it works most of the time if it's cut really well on the machine it'll usually blend right in on the burner. Let's so, take a look, see how this did. Get an idea. There you can see the EDM finish and then the cut finish. And I can't feel anything other than a different texture, which that's why we'll end up going in there and benching that all uniform. But that is doing what we wanted. We, we, we only needed to do the corner. And then as it wrapped around these two edges, um, and that's what blending the electrode into that cut uh, it, it's very helpful knowing what you're going to be cutting versus what you're going to be burning and how much of it should we overlap to make sure that we don't leave any tiny little steps where the burn and the cut didn't match. And I'll kind of show that uh, on the whiteboard. 
All right, now that this is done, I'm going to take this out of here, lift up this electrode, and kind of take a look. So this is where our EDM had to blend into our cut on the on our five-axis machine. Um, you can see this really nice blend. It looks like a transition, but you can't feel it at all. It might be a couple tenths, but that's what we're after. Real nice, clean, from cut to burn. Here's the CAD I was talking about that we were going to look at for the EDM that we were burning on that part. So here is the transparent electrode, and I'm going to make it solid. That's what it looks like when we designed it. And it's, it, it, the whole idea is to be able to EDM this sharp edge in here as sharp as we can. Typically with EDM, you don't get smaller than one thou of a radius down in the corner. You can get down as close to, as we've done like seven to eight tenths of a radius down there um, for anything that is sharp in the EDM process. So this is what we're trying to do. This is all cut, everything else is cut. We're coming in here with a finished electrode to, to make those edges as sharp as we can. Here we have the cavity side of this mold, and we were out there on the EDM trying, just trying to show you what it looked like, but the CAD shows it a lot easier. This is the shape we're working with. It's a radius, radius into a sharp corner. So we ended up making an electrode for making this as sharp as we can. Um, it pretty much is going to be a, like a one thou rad when it's done. And that's going to be uh, an interesting topic. So as I turn this electrode on, we can kind of see that it's transparent. Um, so what we're gonna talk about is the difference between 2D and 3D orbiting for accuracy. And one of the things that I don't recommend, and we kind of built this trode uh, a little bit wrong, I would say. So right here on this edge, we kind of ended the electrode. Mo most of the time we wanna extend these surfaces out because you can end up with a small lip on this edge if you end the electrode design right here and i will show that in this whiteboard lesson i'm about to show you whiteboard i want to talk about what i showed in the cad is trying to extend the surfaces so you don't end up with a bad condition and the reason that it worked the way we did it was because we were blending into a pre-cut area we weren't burning that area that I was talking about extending. So here's what happens if you make your electrode with overburn and you do not extend it. What ends up happening is the electrode using a 3D orbit, let's say, will end up burning and leaving a, a piece of material here on this corner. So I recommend that you extend your electrode so that you end up with a nice flat section in a condition like this where you have the steel, your electrode, you'll end up with a strange little feature there and that will stop your mold from coming together or create a bad condition on a slide or whatever that might be. But this is just a simple explanation of why uh, we recommend it, especially when you're burning up to an edge that you wanna go past it with the electrode to make a nice clean edge. This brings me to one of my mistakes when I first started going from plunge EDM to orbiting EDM. The 2D orbiting goes down in 2D all the way to the bottom and it does a XY circle. And that's the most common uh, orbiting. The 3D does it XY, ZX and ZY. So that kind of orbiting creates very good geometry geometrically. So what, and it also takes longer to do because there's many more steps in both those directions or all three of those directions. So using 2D orbiting helps you go a little faster and that's what I was trying to do, is try to speed up some of the burn time. Um, but it creates a problem when you're trying to be super accurate, when you're trying to blend into cut geometry. And what happens is this, this trode comes down in 2D orbit, and I have my electrode cut for 3D, which means I have this perfectly offset, sharp steel radius trode offset, let's say it's a, Let's say for this example, it's a 10 thou overburn, and that distance is 10 thousandths. Then with 3D, 
this is going to turn out correctly. If I run that same exact trode with 2D orbiting, what ends up happening, my trode comes down here and it does its x, y, 2D orbit circle and the electrode gets real close to this edge, actually violates this radius at the bottom. And then I've had this electrode with the radius here, it actually wipes out my sharp corner in the steel up here as well. So very, very carefully make sure that you're using 3D orbiting with 3D cut electrodes. If you want that corner to be sharp with 2D, then you have to make this corner on the electrode sharp as well. That's a big mistake I made and I learned the hard way, especially when I was trying to blend using a larger overburn. With a smaller overburn, you can get away with it and not notice it, but when you're working with real tight tolerances, real, real small features, then it makes way more sense to use the full 3D orbit, let it take the time it needs, but it will come out correct. One thing I do want to mention also is this little area right here, I'm going to call it the armpit of EDM, is when the trode actually has to overhang a, a horizontal area and it's going to be burning on that top surface as well as the side and bottom. I, we call it the, the armpit. So this area here is the armpit and let me show you what I'm, my, my problems I have with it. Um, if we have our electrode correct and we're doing a 3D orbit like we're supposed to, what happens is we call this area when it's burning, it kind of traps the debris, the sparked tiny particles. They end up being a black, which we call a schmutz inside that pocket. And it ends up getting into this area. And what can happen, even if you have this done correctly, you could still roll this corner um, if it's not getting a good flush in there. Uh, the newer machines don't require a lot of flush, but when you have this condition, I recommend putting flush on it. So that, that schmutz doesn't wreck your, your geometry on that armpit corner. What has happened to me in the past after I've wiped out this corner on accident because it wasn't flushing correctly um, is I'd have to dot this or laser weld that corner, however it might be. And then I would actually make a separate electrode to do just that. I'd separate these two trodes. So we have a trode here to do the top. And then I would make the, another electrode just straight and just do that sideburn so that we can keep that corner real sharp. That's probably the best way to do it, um, unless you have to do something where it blends to another part, but that's what I would recommend. Here's my example with the paper, the electrode on the top and the steel on the bottom. This is the condition when it orbits. Um, you have the, the spark gap, which is the distance between these two. So you're down in orbit, comes in like this, Actually, we're going to stay 3D orbit. So this thing is going to ride up this corner and you can see the steel actually stays sharp um, right here. And as it comes down, it, it's, it creates the round radius here as it burns down. So you have this condition as it orbits and gets closer to finish. What happens with the 2D is it goes down and then it orbits all the way to the wall. And as you can see, it wipes out the, not only it makes this incorrect, it makes the armpit incorrect as well. Thank you for joining us for our episode of Learn to Burn. Uh, hopefully you understand a little bit more about blending and electrode armpits. Remember to subscribe and like, and stay tuned next month for our second episode of 5X Factor. So when 